In my last video, I showed a game in my favorite opening, The Accelerated Dragon, in which Black managed to achieve the thematic D5 pawn sacrifice and won a nice game. Today, I'm going to share with you a game also in The Accelerated Dragon, but in this game, I, I lost. And um, I got a taste of my own medicine, so to speak. Uh, my opponent was international master Femi Balogun, um, and this was in national championship 2022. Uh, this was a very painful loss for me uh, because it was the only game I lost in that uh, championship. And um, I feel like had I not lost this game, I might have had a good chance of becoming national champion. Okay, so let's have a look. So my opponent starts with the move e4. I play c5, the Sicilian, knight c6. And finally, I play g6. This is the move that shows that black wants to play an accelerated dragon. Now, this is the first interesting point in the game. My opponent um, exchanges the knights. And uh, this variation is not supposed to be really dangerous for, for black. But uh, my opponent had some interesting ideas, as we will see in a moment. Okay, so I captured back towards the center. This is what you teach uh, uh, beginners, that you should always capture towards the center so that you can have more control of the center squares, right? And these are the central squares that you would like to control generally. Okay, the more control you have of these squares, the better your position. All things being equal. Okay, so my opponent continues to develop his pieces normally. I played bishop g7. I'm also trying to complete development. I played d6. The point of this move is I want to prevent pawn to e5, right? If I play knight f6 without playing d6, my opponent can play pawn to e5. And that can turn out to be, to be quite painful. Okay, so I played d6 to prevent e5. All right, my opponent played knight c3, just developing his pieces, nothing crazy yet. Queen a5. Now, this move is the move, um, is, the, is the mistake, is the last mistake of the game, in my opinion. It's the big mistake I made, and this is why I lost the game. And I find that very interesting because a move that looks so harmless looks like uh, a decent move. How, how possible is it that such a move is already a very serious mistake, you know? Now, to understand why this move is a big, big mistake, let me explain to you what the problem is. First of all, what is the logic of the move, okay? I played queen a5 because I want to play knight f6 and I don't want my opponent to be able to play pawn to e5. All right, I don't want my opponent to be able to play pawn to e5. That's why I played some queen a5. And I don't want to exchange queens. Okay? So, for example, let, let me just show you what I mean. So, for example, if I just go ahead and play knight f6 here, which was my goal, okay? Now my opponent can play pawn to e5. And if I capture back, opponent can just exchange queens. And then take on f7. And you can see, although now that I'm looking at it, perhaps that pawn is not, uh, maybe we can try to, to trap the, the bishop like this. Okay, okay, so that's not working. That's not working. But I didn't like this because even in this position, let us say that the opponent just plays something like queen e2. All right, let's say the opponent plays something like queen e2. I just don't like this position. Maybe it's fine. Maybe there's no problem. But I don't like the fact that my pawns are doubled on the e-file like this. Okay, so my reasoning was that I can play knight f6 without allowing e5. If I play um, queen a5 first, and then you can't play e5 anymore, and I can play knight f6 at my convenience. Okay, so it turns out that this was a big mistake. And in fact, I should have played queen to c7 instead. And you will see why in a moment. In the game, my opponent played queen to f3. This is a double attack. Okay? This is the first obvious attack, the bishop and the queen. But also, my opponent is actually threatening to play pawn to e5. All right? When he will be able to capture on c6. So if I go on with my plan, which was to play knight f6, opponent can just play 
pawn to e5, x clamp. And if you capture, okay, queen takes c6, double attack, attacking both my king on e8 and the rook on a8. Okay, so this is this is game over. Okay, you can't defend both things at the same time. Okay, now, um, so you have to defend somehow. And this is where you know that the problem has come already. If my queen had been on c7, okay, if my queen had been on c7 here, and the opponent played queen to f3, I would just play knight f6. Now I'm about to castle. Okay, if he plays e5, I can just capture. And he doesn't have queen takes c6 because my queen is defending c6. This, you know, almost um, insignificantly, uh, insignificant nuance, you know, decided the game. And you will see how in a moment. Okay, so queen f3. Um, okay, in the game I played queen a5. Okay, queen f3, pawn to e6, bishop f4. Very good move. So he's not allowing me to complete development in peace. He's immediately attacking the d6 pawn, and I have to respond in some way. In the game, I played queen to c7. You might be wondering why I didn't just play pawn to d5 here. It looks like pawn to d5 is a good move. But if I had played pawn to d5, the destructive sacrifices on d5 would have destroyed the black king very quickly, like this. Okay? This sacrifice is so powerful because... Now your king is still a long way from castling, and your king is stuck in the center. Now the opponent is threatening knight c7 check. And if you try bishop to b7, queen e4 check is very strong. King d8, rook d1. You can see all of the white pieces, with the exception of the rook on, on a1, all of them are attacking the black king. This is not a good, you know, this is not a good situation to be in. And here, black is already almost busted because even if you move away out of the line of sight of the rope, now there comes this beautiful sacrifice. Knight b6 check. After you capture queen e8 check, now your king has no safe squares. King has no safe squares because of that bishop. Okay, you must bring your queen. Then you get checkmate. All right. So um, it was clear. It was clear that I couldn't play d5. Okay, so in the game, um, I played queen to c7. And here, my opponent immediately increased the pressure, rook to d1. Now, he's threatening the pawn on d6. And how do you defend? How do you defend? In the game, I played pawn to e5. But this is a big, big, big mistake. Okay, perhaps I could have tried bishop to e5. But... That position didn't appeal to me at all. Anyway, in the game, I played uh, pawn to e5. And my opponent played bishop to g5. This move makes completing development virtually impossible. Remember, my goal to complete development is to move my knight out and to castle. But now I can't move the knight out. If I play knight to f6, my opponent will just capture, right? And his queen will, will capture after my, my bishop recaptures. Okay, I can't play knight e7 either because then there's queen takes f7. All right, so he's making development really impossible. And I thought, okay, maybe if I attack the bishop on g5 and it has to go back, I attack it again, it goes back, then I can play knight to f6. But I had missed something very, very important. Okay, so my opponent appeared to be going along with my, with my plan. Little did I know that he had prepared this very nasty pawn sacri uh, rook sacrifice. Absolutely beautiful. And this is the kind of move I would be proud to play myself. Rook takes d6. The rook is immune from capture. You can't take. Because if you capture on d6, all right? Now he captures here, check. And rook d1, you're losing your queen. And your pieces are completely disorganized. This is completely lost. So now that the rook is immune from capture, we can see black is in big trouble already. I realized that I was about to lose, and I decided to try to see if I could confuse my opponent in some way. And so I tried bishop to a6. The, the logic is straightforward. Okay, I want him to take on a6 so that I can now capture on uh, d6. And he no longer has queen takes f7 in that position. Okay, but my opponent, really experienced, really strong player, he's not going to fall for that. 
So he hit me again with this brilliant move. Rook takes c6. Exclaim. Rook captures c6. Exclaim. Uh, and again, the rook is immune from capture because if you take on c6, all right, I played queen e7 in the game, but if I take on c6, okay, he has queen takes f7 check, king moves out of the way, rook check, no choice, king c8, bishop check, no choice in the matter, king uh, b8, and then rook d8, check, no choice in the matter, bishop c8, rook takes, this wins my queen, and still my pieces are completely disorganized. This is completely busted. Okay, so uh, the game is almost over already. I tried to hold on, but it was gone. It was gone. So he captured the free piece. I took his own piece back, but uh, yeah, too many pieces are attacking. Whenever it turns out that you are getting attacked by four of your opponent's pieces, right? And this rook is about to join. All of my opponent's pieces are participating in the attack. And look at my own pieces. Look at the stupid rook on h8. Very silly rook. Bishop on g7, doing nothing. Knight on g8, doing nothing. Rook on a, doing nothing. You know, this is a complete disaster. Okay, so queen b7, bishop b5 check. Okay, I can't take the bishop because of the knight fork, which will win my queen. Okay, so I moved. Queen a3 check. Really nice geometry. Really nice geometry. Knight e7 and bishop c6. Um, and uh, this is where I resigned. Okay, so uh, the moral of the story is that you really need to know your openings and understand the nuances, right? This game shows that even a strong player can get completely destroyed in the opening uh, just by missing something critical. Uh, this was a very painful loss, but I learned a lot from it. Um, uh, and um, yeah, I hope... You, you also learn something from this game. So it's not like the Accelerated Dragon is a first win or anything like that. You, you really need to understand the opening to be able to play it well. Um, okay. Um, please, uh, if you enjoyed this video, do subscribe to the channel and like this video. See you at the next one. Cheers. Bye.